Colin's Last Stand needs your help. If you like what CLS does, whether here on SideQuest in the eclectic interview podcast series Fireside Chats or the retro and nostalgia-fueled show Knockback, please consider showing your support at patreon.com slash Stand. Doing so not only ensures that CLS keeps making content, but it also gets you cool perks, including exclusive podcasts, early access to shows, the ability to vote on show topics, and much more. Thank you for your kindness, generosity, and support. Without you, Collins Last Stand cannot and will not exist. Now, on to the show. Greetings and salutations. Welcome back to Colin's Last Stand SideQuest right here on YouTube. My name is Colin Moriarty. As always, I hope today's video finds you and yours very well. Today, I want to travel back to the year 2012 and talk about Mass Effect 3, one of the great games of that year from my perspective. That, of course, is an opinion that many people don't share. And as some of you might remember, the reaction to Mass Effect 3 and specifically to the endings of the game snared the entire industry for quite some time. And I voluntarily and probably stupidly injected myself into the drama. So I don't only want to talk about what happened with me and kind of clarify and even apologize for some of what happened, but I want to talk about what happened with Mass Effect 3 more broadly why it happened, what happened afterwards, and how a lot of what happened rings through to today. So let's travel back in time, friends, and I will see you on the other side. In early March of 2012, more than six years ago, Mass Effect 3, the conclusion of developer BioWare's and publisher Electronic Arts' choice-based spacefaring RPG trilogy, launched on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC. It was very easily one of the most anticipated games of what ended up being a pretty packed year, one that also saw the launch of the likes of Borderlands 2, Telltale's The Walking Dead, Halo 4, Far Cry 3, Dishonored, Journey, and more. The wait for Mass Effect 3 was especially tough because of a fact many of you may have since forgotten. It was originally supposed to come out in 2011. So we were impatient, but everyone eventually got over the extended wait. Mass Effect 3 would surely be a fitting culmination of an epic voyage through space that began back in 2007. The wait would be worth it, right? Mass Effect 3 would wrap everything up perfectly and make the entire trilogy one for the gaming ages. Well, it didn't quite work out that way, at least in the eyes of some. Critics, for one, loved Mass Effect 3 upon its release. The game sits at a commanding 93 on Metacritic on PS3 and 360, and a still very impressive 89 on PC. Sales were predictably strong too. Mass Effect 3 pushed nearly a million copies globally in 24 hours, sold 1.3 million copies in the US in its first month, grossed publisher Electronic Arts more than $200 million in sales by May of 2012, and sold more than 6 million units globally by the beginning of 2017. Mass Effect 3 wasn't a runaway Call of Duty-style commercial success, but it did very well. And from my perspective, I thought it was awesome. As a huge fan of the entire trilogy, I thought Mass Effect 3 was a fitting and worthy ending to Commander Shepard's story. And while I was disappointed in the continuous scaling back of the franchise's once-emphasized RPG systems, the shooting felt great, the characters were dynamic, and I liked the whole making tons of choices thing. It just worked for me. There was a snag, though, one that I certainly didn't see coming when I played the game in the weeks before it launched. Its endings. I honestly didn't think twice about the way Mass Effect 3 ended when I beat it in late February of 2012, but for a legion of players around the world, pardon the pun, the way developer Bioware opted to cap its spacefaring trilogy would become a rallying cry, one that I mostly voluntarily found myself caught up in. The problem some gamers had was this. None of your choices in Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2, and Mass Effect 3 really seem to matter. Bioware made a big deal out of carrying sometimes grand and sometimes granular choices through shared save files between the three games, but when push came to shove, the few possible culminations of the trilogy seemed to take little into account. Honestly, that choice didn't seem to have much bearing on the trilogy's ending made sense to me, and I often used my diamond-shaped analogy to explain it. The trilogy started small, it ended up bulged at the sides, and then it became small again. That's how a lot of stories go, frankly, whether any sort of agency exists over it. It was all about the journey for me, and that's actually how I feel with a lot of games. The way a game ends is very, very rarely what I take from it. It's how I got to the ending that mattered, that sticks with me. That created memorable, unforgettable gameplay, storytelling, and character-driven moments. But lots of people didn't agree with me. And so for much of the spring and summer of 2012, the gaming industry was at least partially, and sometimes wholly, caught in this snare. And it raised some really interesting questions, paramount among them this. Do players have the right to twist a developer's creation into what they want? Something that reflects the desires of a vocal minority over the inherent whims of the writers, designers, engineers, and others who crafted Mass Effect 3 over several years. My answer, at least at the outset, was a vehement no, though that hard no has since morphed into something softer and more nuanced as the years pass by. My take at the time was simple. You're allowed to dislike anything you want, 
Criticize anything you'd like, love or hate to your heart's content, but your rights stop at the borders of the creation. In other words, you can loathe every word of Mass Effect 3, every polygon, every sound, every line of code, but asking to have it changed to fit your vision of a game you didn't create, you didn't write, you didn't design, you didn't have anything to do with other than at the point of sale, was a bridge too far for me. Criticism, whether of games or movies or music or whatever, is supposed to be a grading of what's there. And if what's there isn't good, said criticism should reflect that. But is criticism supposed to be the forcing of change to fit a different vision? I really struggled with that. Now, do I still feel this way? Well, yes and no. I think the situation is far more complicated than 2012 Colin originally wanted to believe, just as it's far more complicated than the 2012 Change Mass Effect 3's ending brigade wanted to believe. I think both extremes were wrong in their own ways, and I think both extremes hit on some salient and important points that have some objective truth to them. But that's how things often crystallize with hindsight. Time, as always, sharpens the edges, erases the blurry lines, and allows room for pondering, the sorting of successes and errors, and the development of a more nuanced, more reasonable, and more substantive stance. I think I got there in the end, and I think others have too. Unfortunately, some damage was done in the meantime, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't contribute to the brewing controversy and the fallout that resulted, because I did, and I'm not proud of it. I was so passionate about this fiasco that I made a video at IGN all about it, taking the anti-Mass Effect 3 crowd to task, and coining the now infamous term gamer entitlement. The video was a huge mistake, probably the worst of my 16-year career in games. The video as it was originally shot was far longer, far more nuanced, and got to the heart of the matter without being snarky, mean-spirited, and arrogant. And while I could blame the person who edited it, or the editor-in-chief who signed off on it, ultimately that would be unfair. The buck stops with me. I take full responsibility for this lapse in judgment, and that I unfortunately contributed to the further toxicity surrounding the Mass Effect 3 ending drama. As I told Jim Sterling in a conversation in 2015, the first time I ever publicly spoke about the notorious ending video, I regret the way I came off, and I really regret that what I was trying to say was buried beneath a snide facade. I made a mistake, and while it's one some especially angry people can't let go of, I can't go back and correct it. What I can do, as it turns out, is clarify my stance, and let you know where I stand now. Maybe it'll make some sense to you, and maybe it won't, but I promise you I'm not going to call you entitled if you disagree with me. For starters, taking such a hard stance was absolutely hypocritical of me considering a couple of things that I championed in the years prior to Mass Effect 3's launch. The more minor example of hypocrisy comes from Fallout 3. As you may remember, Fallout 3 had a finite ending, which meant that once you beat the game, that was it. A really unusual step for an open-world RPG to take even back in 2008. But with the Broken Steel DLC released in 2009, Bethesda changed things so that the game wouldn't conclusively end once the last primary mission was beaten. While the outcry from Fallout 3 players wasn't all that loud on this front, it was a change made based on player feedback, and it's one I applauded. A more serious example of hypocrisy, however, comes from Infamous 2. As you probably recall, developer Sucker Punch completely redesigned protagonist Cole McGrath for the sequel, and players weren't having it. My old IGN co-worker, Greg Miller, was at the center of getting the character changed back, and I applauded it every step of the way on Podcast Beyond. In short, I was inconsistent, and the many people that pointed that out were right to do so. How could I take issue with players demanding that Mass Effect 3's ending change while two years ago I was part of the group crying about Cole's redesign in Infamous 2, celebrating when he was changed back? There's more here, of course. Something Steven Totillo wrote on Kotaku back in 2012 resonated with me, when he penned something simple but profound. That changing the ending showed video games being truly interactive. I'm not sure I could really argue with that point. And an article written by Eric Kane over at Forbes took me to task too, and it made a basic point. Players were mad because they were literally promised something different. It wasn't merely a case of a missed vision, of time and money issues on the development front, on a lack of talent. This was the basis for BioWare and EA literally being reported to the Federal Trade Commission. Hell, even the Better Business Bureau got involved. While I think that's all insane, I still get where people were coming from, and I took Eric's point, even though it took me a while to get there. I think that Forbes article was really hard on me, and truth be told, I hated Kane for a long time after he wrote it. But I've softened, and he has too. Today, Eric and I are e-friends, but I'd also be loath not to clarify my feelings and stick with some of my original stance too. I think we need to let creators be creative. I think we need to let artists make their art, writers write, designers design, and programmers program. And I think we need to let the chips fall where they may. Sometimes all of this will result in masterpieces and other times glorious failures. I think what really got my goat with Mass Effect 3 was the utter flippancy shown towards the millions who ended up playing the game and loved, liked, or had no issue whatsoever with the ending. 
I know you already know this, but this wasn't an issue with the majority of the people who played Mass Effect 3, who likely had no idea whatsoever this controversy was even brewing to begin with. So what about them? Now they get a patch series of endings that change something they didn't want to be changed, didn't ask to be changed, didn't need to be changed? I feel like a lot of people didn't take that into account, but I did. So not only was I advocating on behalf of the vision of Bioware, but also for normal players around the world who loved what they got, it all came off as a little self-important to me. But then again, I get the irony in that, because the video I made about it was also self-important. Ray Muzika, who founded Bioware, referred to Mass Effect 3 as the studio's best game even after the controversy erupted, while also talking about humility and how important criticism is. I could have learned a lot from his stance at the time, but I didn't. But there was an equal lack of humility from corners of the internet who thought it was they who controlled Mass Effect and the vision therein, and not those who crafted it. And I took and still take umbrage with that. It's amazing how gray the situation still is for me. But I think gray is better than binary, because it was a binary view that got us, and me really, into such a sticky situation. It's stunning how time washes away what once seemed inevitable. And back in 2012, it seemed inevitable that Mass Effect would go down in history and would be replicated in some way, shape, or form in the future. People still love the trilogy, but it's lost some of its shine, for sure, and Mass Effect Andromeda may have actually killed the entire IP for good. But time doesn't change some other things. The creative visions of developers are under attack more than ever. Look at what happened with Kingdom Come Deliverance, or Far Cry 5, or The Witcher 3, or The Last Knight, or any number of other games, or devs, or whoever or whatever that have become embroiled in controversy, with plenty of criticism pressing for change, which I find largely unacceptable. In the creative fields, you have to give creators lots of rope. Unfortunately, they'll sometimes hang themselves with it. That's how it goes. I don't want devs to be gun-shy and safe. I want them to go balls out and give us the very best they think they can, even if it doesn't always work out. I don't want some guy at Waypoint or Polygon dictating what game devs can and cannot do, any more than I want angry forum posters and Twitter users gaining that sort of power over creativity. And if I'm being honest, and that's what this whole video is all about, there's a lot of that in what happened with Mass Effect 3, just from an entirely different angle. Remember, it was a similar uproar that got Six Days in Fallujah canned before it even launched, that got Ken Levine called a racist for Bioshock Infinite, that caused Jonathan Blow to get shoved to the margins by his peers. To deny that what happened with Mass Effect 3 shares some of its genetic code with all this would be a lie. I took on some hard truths that didn't paint me in the best light throughout this video, and it's time others took their medicine too. We need to be careful, deliberate, and fair. I think a lot of people pushing hard on Bioware and EA in 2012 would be mortified with how other situations have since panned out. I know I've been. I'm sorry for the way I came off during the Mass Effect 3 fiasco. I wish that I was smarter about what I said and how I said it. And I know that I didn't only let my own viewpoints down, but also some fans of mine who look for me for something educated, thought out, and consistent. I betrayed myself by becoming the angry internet commenter that I hate. I also betrayed the many salient points I was trying to make, but largely failed to. It's a lesson learned, and even more than six years later, it's one worth reminding myself about, and reminding all of you too. Sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes a vision doesn't turn out as intended. Sometimes we fail or embarrass ourselves or come out on the wrong end of whatever. This video was meant to learn from my mistakes and others' mistakes too, so hopefully we won't repeat the past. All right, that's it for this episode of SideQuest. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, leave your comments below because I'll be reading them. Thumb up the video if you liked it, thumb it down if you didn't, and please share the might, the majesty, the wonder, and the intrigue of Colin's last stand, SideQuest, Knockback, Fireside Chats, etc., with friends and family because it really does help. I will waste no more of your time today, but I do appreciate the time you did give me, and I will see you next time for more SideQuest. Until then, keep on gaming.